Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da hadrati fillah A couple of questions were asked by one of our brothers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us and him and bless us and him and bless us all with ilm al-nafi rizqan tayyib wa ilm al-mutaqabbilan ameen ya rabbil alameen He asked are there any places to seek knowledge similar to the ma'ahad uh, the ma'ahad al-ilm uh, in Yemen I mean, the Marrakis, the Sunnah, like the curriculum similar to the Darul Hadith in Yemen. Uh, I am not really aware, but I'm sure there are. Uh, I've heard and people have listed on this channel, so you can go to some of the comments if you can find about, uh, especially comments about asking about where to study knowledge. Many of the people have listed places in Egypt, but also some Darul Hadith in Morocco, in, in various places in Morocco. And so you may want to consult with those comments and ask those people and comment uh, and, and ask those people who have that experience because I'm sure that there are places that have. And in fact, what I would say about uh, Dara Hadith in Yemen, uh, each one of those Marrakis, they have their own kind of program. And yes, they have curriculum, but they weren't, from my experience, weren't, really as organized as that. It's more informal study that there was particular durus that the main sheikh of the Marcus would have. Maybe after Fajr he'd have a couple of durus and some, you know, after the Salats, after Dhuhr, after Asr maybe, and after Maghrib and Isha maybe. And then there would be other hundreds of other durus, especially in a place like Damaj and in some of the other Marrakis that are, you know, that were uh, depending on the size of the Marcus, there would be lots, you know, tens, if not hundreds of durus that might be going on at any one time. And you can ask the, you can also consult with the brother uh, Abu Taymiyyah about this. And I saw recently uh, a video, he was giving some advice about, um, points about seeking knowledge, which was a very, very beneficial and I didn't finish it. I just went through, listened to some of it. But it was very, very beneficial. And I advised to listen to that. And he mentioned about people who just packed on Durus. Although that's outside from our topic. But the point is, is um, he maybe he has some further knowledge about that. But you can consult and ask others. The second question was related to... Uh, Uh, how long does it take to be fluent in Arabic uh, to, I guess, to sit in halaqat? I'm not really sure what he's saying, and understanding the speech. Okay. The reason why I'm asking this question is that I'm planning to study Arabic and Dean in an Arab country. How many years do you suggest? One or two years. But, uh, what I will say, and this was a mistake that I made when I first left uh, America to try to study and go to Yemen is, and I'll, I'll never forget this, I went to one of the communities, it was actually Abu Muslim's community in, in New Jersey before I traveled, and he, uh, I can't recall if it was him or one of the students of knowledge, he said, listen, he said, look around this masjid, and he took literally took me around the masjid, and he said, that brother studied in Egypt, this one studied in Morocco. This one went to Yemen. This one went. He said, "We have where the masjid is full of one and two year brothers, but what do you really get in those one or two years?" So, if that's all that you can for whatever your family situation is or whatever the case may be, okay. But I would advise that you go and try to really try to gain something. You know, try to give some some years. So that depends upon you, and it depends on the program. I've known people who lived in Damage and so forth who, in nine months. They studied the three Medina books, and they were they were fairly strong. You know, they were they were okay. Uh, and others, you know, and usually the the program in the university, Islamic University in Medina, and some of the other, they usually have a two year Arabic program for people who are non native speakers who are not Arab. So, I would say that, you know, give as much time as you can. Don't look at even one year, but definitely at a, at a minimum, try to give it two years if you can, if not more, because that's just scratching the surface. Arabic is just a tool. That's a key, okay? And depending on the strength of your Arabic, it's going to help you unlock more. And so that by gaining 
not giving that out of the hawk. So I will say that really be thorough because you don't want to. And this is what I found for myself is unfortunately, as I mentioned, some of the experiences, some of the scholars that I sat with who mentioned this very issue of in Kitha, of where you stop. So, for example, my first experience, I went to Yemen and then I stopped. I had to stop. I had to go back to America, ran out of money. And because my priorities weren't on Elm purely like they should have been, you know, and I didn't know how to study. No one taught me. No one, you know, there was no advice that we didn't really have those all those benefits. And to be patient, to stay in a place like Damaj without money or little money or some of those places, you know, those were the, the, the real Mujtahideen. So everyone's on a different level. So my point is, is to give yourself some time and be consistent. Try to accomplish. Don't study, oh, I studied the two Medina books, and then you go back. Study, finish the series. Or if you study out of, uh, what is it, out of the uh, Baina Yadek, Baina Yadek, or, or any of whatever, try to finish a curriculum. Try to finish a program so that way you're standing on something solid and you don't have to, next time you leave or whatever, or you have so many holes and then you get distracted in the dunya, jobs, this, university, marriage, whatever the case may be, and then you're unable to finish your studies. So I say with all earnest <laughs> that you need to be thorough. Try to get your Arabic. That's a, a key tool to get it strong. Because many people, they studied and they weren't strong in the Arabic and it shows and there's holes and then they had to fill in the holes and, and it reflects in the other sciences. You know, if my Arabic was stronger and I would love to finish more Arabic studies myself, uh, if I could go, if I could have just six months in Egypt, that would be for me a big deal, you know, to really focus on Quran and really focus on Arabic where I didn't have to work and I could focus. But that's a luxury. I don't have that luxury. So uh, what I will say is, and you can take you know, you, you want to be thorough so you don't have to plug in so many gaps. Because with those tools, certain sciences, for example, usul of fiqh, and even fiqh, and even bigger books, you need a, a competency in Arabic. Usul of fiqh relies completely on the Arabic language. It's very important. So much of the mustalahal and so much of the principles are based on Arabic, based on the actual language, on how you, when you understand the, the principles of fiqh and so forth. So... And those mustalahat, those terms. So it's very important, the Arabic language. And you don't have to go to a super high level. That's another thing. What you'll find is, you'll find a lot of times the Sufis and others really go into depth in Arabic. Okay? And it's great, but I think for somebody, of you know, it depends on what your specialty is. I think you just need to gain a strong level of competency. And what that competency is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But at least that you are fairly strong, you've went through some, some grammar books, and you have some competency in that, and that's going to carry so that way you have access to the books. Okay? You have access to tafsir. Tafsir also, a lot of tafsir relies strongly on the Arabic language, not just memorizing words. And so what you find sometimes from some of the people who studied a little bit or didn't study and get steeped enough in the Arabic, you find the weakness in their translations. You find the weakness in their, even in their studies and their articulating fiqh and stuff like this. They may make mistakes because they didn't get grounded. They didn't finish a program. They didn't, you know, have that that it's gone in the language, and so then there's holes, and even holes in how they deliver the message, because the Arabic language is so important to understanding the various sciences, and especially things related to fiqh and usul of fiqh. And as I said, you have some of the, the Sufis and others, and the Ashadis, they really go into the language, and it's great that they're, some of them are very strong in the language, but you see that they also, they're weak in Aqidah, or they have some inhiraf in their, their creed. They deviate in their Aqidah, and then that, uh, so the language is not going to be the greatest, your greatest attribute if your Aqidah is, uh, uh, you have mistakes in your Aqidah. So it's very important to have a balance and have competency. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.